Welcome back in. So here we have the speed of the actual wave. So sometimes it's called the universal wave equation. It's not very difficult, okay, if you've covered speeds before. In fact, uh, this particular speed is rather simple to understand. If you think way back into kinematics, then you know that the speed itself is simply the total amount of distance, okay, that is covered over a certain amount of time. Now, for waves, the distance itself is the actual wavelength. So if you take a look at a wave, you can figure out what the actual distance is. And I'll give you an example. We'll actually do a calculation so you can relate it back to this. For the moment, you can think about, okay, these particular waves passing us by. And then, you know, we can have a actual wavelength, which would be the distance in between. And let's, for this instance, just for simplicity, kind of between maybe two peaks. But it's actually with regards to same instances in time, in terms of the repetition of the wave. And then it is dividing by time. Now this time is how long does it take to cover this one particular wavelength, right? So that is the speed. Now we don't always like to utilize the period, okay, in terms of the division. And there's a very nice relationship between period and frequency. So within here, so they are reciprocals of each other. And if you recall, the frequency is nothing else but simply the amount of cycles that happen, okay, over time. So in that instance, okay, if you're talking about period, it would be how many cycles have passed by, okay, within a certain amount of unit time. And if you do this, well, because of the reciprocal, and these are just simply fractions, you will get our universal wave equation, which is frequency multiplied by lambda or by the wavelength. Now, frequency is given out in hertz, okay, which is the metric standard, and lambda is typically given out in meters, which is also the metric standard. But they don't have to be in metric standards. We can certainly use other tools for that. But if you keep them in metric standard, then what nicely happens is that your speed is actually in meters per second. So we are referring to speed. So this is not exactly velocity with some kind of a displacement, although we can certainly talk about vectors if we wanted to, but it's unnecessary for this case because we just want to know how quickly are these waves moving by. So let's jump in okay, into an example kind of visually to try to see how we can break down this universal wave equation and so that you know as a student what this is actually referring to. All right, so I have kind of animated a wave so that you can relate it back and you can imagine that these are particles. Now I've highlighted one of the particles. It has a little red kind of around it so that we can actually track it so you'll see the reason why. I have a clock as well so we can time these things so we can figure out what the period is for a cycle, for instance. And okay, we're going to be able to measure these things out as well. All right. So if this is the wave itself, so the first thing that I'm going to do actually is to try to figure out, okay, what is a wave length? So what's the distance, right, between, okay, that I want to be able to find. So I'm going to capture this and let's try to measure it. All right, so here's the wavelength. So let's try to see. So this is in centimeters that I have in here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just highlight these things for us. So we want to capture one full repetition and find out what is the distance between okay, that one full repetition. And that would be within here, okay, this particular lambda okay, that we would have. Okay, so let's try to see what that would be. So if I take this, I'm going to now maybe I'll designate it within here just so that you can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to take, okay, so let's say from this particle, which is all the way at the top, okay, and the wave continues on, and it has a corresponding particle, okay, right here, which is in the same spot, but just one repetition later. So if I do this, okay, so within here, so I'm going to just start, so this is going to be zero, oh, okay, and it looks like it's 11 centimeters there. So if I have that in it, Okay, so that would have been the first. My lambda is equal to 11 centimeters. If I wanted in metric standards, so 0 0.11 meter. So that would be the first thing that we would do. The next item, okay, will be that I'm going to animate this and I'm going to try to see how quickly this wave is passing us by. So I'm going to actually capture one period. And for this, in order to help me, okay, so within here, so I kind of prepared myself. So these are the 
kind of amplitudes, okay, the peaks, okay, and the troughs that I have in there. And within those, so if I now animate this through, I'm gonna close this down, you can see that the wave is passing us by. Now, it would be kind of difficult to see. I mean, although you can see how the wave is moving, okay, kind of forward as you're going through, but a little bit easier way, and for this wave, because it's pretty much a harmonic, so it's very uniform, goes up and down, I can just capture one of the particles and then trace it back and so that it does a one full out repetition back and forth. And I'll actually look at the one which is to the left that we see here, and it has a little red circle around it. I'm gonna hit the clock, okay, to try to find out, okay, so what this would be. All right, so let's try to capture one period. So I'm gonna to try to catch it at the top, uh, right there, let's start it. Now it has to go all the way down, and has to come back in, okay, and let's pause it there. So it's 5.02. So that would have been for one period. So that's how long it takes to cover basically one full out wavelength within here. Now, once I have this, then I can of course bring it back. So I'm gonna bring it back into here. So what I have is now, okay, so my period is 5.02 seconds. If I wanted to know what the frequency, of course, I can take this and just say one over 5.02 seconds. And then I would be able to find out what the frequency is. And now this would give me exactly what the speed of that wave is. So for this little experiment that we've done, so we have the lambda, okay, we have what the actual period is. So let's try to see, okay, and calculate how quickly this wave would have been moving by. So my speed of the wave, so within here, is my lambda, which is 0 0.11, this is meters, divided by, I'm gonna keep it in period because this is very convenient for me, so notice it's meters per second. Take out my calculator in here, so 0 0.11, divided by 5.02, okay, so within there, this would have been 0, 0.0, this is 2, 1, 9, 1, et cetera. This is meters per second, okay? Or, you know, I can put this in. Now, I've just, I guess, had it to two significant figures here, three significant figures here, so let's keep it to two. So this would have been approximately 2.2 .2 times 10 to the negative 1, 2, meters per second. And that would have been the actual speed, okay, that I would have of this wavelength. So it's not very quick. If I change it to centimeters as you're going through in there, so this would have been around 2.2 centimeters for every second, okay, that it kind of passes us by. So not very fast at all, but this gives you a gauge of basically, okay, as you're going through in here, what it is that we're looking for in terms of trying to see, you know, the actual wavelengths and then the actual period that we have. So now I can use these, not just kind of in these experimental ways, but I can use it and let's take a look at some of these examples in here so that we can apply the formula itself. So here it gives us a sound wave. Now you're gonna learn about sound waves as you continue on. Now it tells us that this sound wave is traveling at approximately 343 meters per second. And indeed, okay, so that's more or less what the sound travels in through air. Of course, it travels maybe differently through various different mediums. But through air, it's about 340. Now, if a particular sound frequency of 25 hertz is recognized by a computer device, so maybe we are trying to take this in here, then what was the wavelength of the wave? So you'll notice that calculations here are very simple because of the fact, now it's talking about frequency, so I'm gonna use this particular equation for this. I can substitute the given pieces. Notice it's all in metric standard, so I can plug it back in here, and now I can solve for my lambda, so it's not very difficult, okay, in order for me to do that. So I can take this out, so 343, divided by 25, and this would have been 13.72 meters. Well, you know, to two significant figures, I guess, okay, that's my highest bid here, okay, or my lowest bid, this would have been approximately 14 meters in terms of a wavelength. Now, that's actually 
pretty big, right? 14 meters is a pretty big wavelength. So, you know, as it travels in, um, you know, it basically spends quite a lot. So we don't get these oscillations very quick. Okay, it would be very subtle. Over 14 meters, it would just take for a full repetition to go through. But that's how you would tackle a question like this. Let's do a maybe final question so that you can also see something a little bit different. Okay, and it pulls your um, kind of knowledge back in into scientific notation okay, and representation of numbers in that form uh, with using powers of 10. So here we have an unknown wave. It has a frequency of, so notice it's enormous, right? It's 29.8 times 10 to the 15 hertz. Okay, that's huge, right? So within here, now what does that mean? This is how many cycles you would have every single second. Okay, so this is quite a lot of cycles because that's what frequency is. So there's a lot of these oscillations back and forth in one second. Now, the wavelength of this wave is tiny. Now, of course, it's going to be tiny if it's moving that quickly, kind of going back and forth, back and forth, okay, within here. So within, if that is very small and very tiny as you're going through, um, let's take a look and see how are we going to figure out at what speed this thing is moving. All right, well, so I can go back in here again. So speed is equal to. Now, again, I have frequency given. So this is going to be much easier to do it in this way. So frequency and the wavelength. So if I substitute this back in, so 29.8 times 10 to the 15 multiplied by 1.005 times 10 to the negative 8. So I guess three significant figures is the smallest one as we multiply these through. So let's see what we get. And there we have it. All right. So as you calculate this through, we get 299490, notice 000, and so on. Now, two, three significant figures. I guess if I round this off, so it's going to be 2.5. 99 and I'll put it back into scientific notation. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's eight meters per second. And this, okay, and you can look this up, looks pretty much like this is a wave, okay, or some kind of a late a wave regarded, okay, to electromagnetic waves, okay, which you may learn about a little bit later, which is very well known as, okay, kind of as a general term, we call it light. Now, Light doesn't have to be the visible light that we think of, uh, but it can be okay, light. And typically, this travels this quickly, okay, so this fast. Um, so it's a pretty quick one. The calculation is rather simple. All right, so there you go. You have an introduction okay, to this universal wave equation. You have what it is. We've measured it through this little animation so that we can see how we can do it. And we tackled a couple of examples. Okay, so I hope that you found this useful. Thanks for watching. Happy studying.